We're back with one of my favorite people, Dr. David Lay, to discuss ethical porn. We just had an amazing webinar about ethical porn for clinicians, about how to work with your clients around engaging in responsible porn use. So we have a couple more questions for Dr. David Lay, and we'll just launch right into it. So can porn be ethical? You know, this is one of the interesting kind of questions, and it's, and it's an interesting challenge. Even just today, there were some articles kind of published um, talking about the dangers of pornography. And uh, in the article, it, it went on to say that some folks today are saying, well, the, the way to fix this is to make, make ethical porn. And the, the authors, and this was a highly conservative kind of media, media outlet, said, you know, ethical porn can never, can never exist. It's a contradiction in terms. You know, pornography is inherently immoral and about exploitation. In my book, I actually, you know, I, I quote, um, you know, uh, uh, I think it's, a, is it Susie Sprinkles? Um, you know, one of the famous uh, porn stars from back in the set. But Annie Sprinkles, yes, gosh, I'm, I'm, I've met her. She's wonderful. I'm sad I forgot her first name. I'm bad about that. Um, and Annie Sprinkles says that the answer to bad porn is not getting rid of porn. It's about making better porn. Mm. And that's kind of what the, the concept of ethical porn is about. Um, now, in my book, I actually talk about ethical porn in two ways. One, I talk about ethical porn in terms of um, ethical porn production, which is um, around the, the idea of making pornography in a responsible, socially um, responsible kind of way. What that means is that the, the, the people in porn should be paid a fair wage, um, that we should treat pornography like any other media, like music, for instance, where um, piracy of that material is, is unethical and exploits the performers so that performers shouldn't be coerced into it. And that's the second kind of part um, component to ethical porn, which is it has to be consensual that we shouldn't be making pornography that involves people being forced into doing things that they don't consent to. Um, so that, uh, you know, we, we, if somebody is not interested in a cer certain kind of sex or a certain kind of sexual behavior, um, that shouldn't be something that they are driven into, um, that it's about consent and all of and, and legality. That actually makes it makes ethical porn safer because then you can watch ethical porn without worrying that, for instance, there is somebody in there that was potentially being raped or exploited, or that you're watching something like the Tracy Lords back in the 1980s, where she was making pornography when she was underage and couldn't consent to that. Ethical porn, you don't have to worry about that because you can trust that the producers have made it legally and consensual. Finally, ethical porn um, involves kind of a diversity of sexuality. What do I mean by that? Well, what that means is where pornography is recognizing and accepting and celebrating basically the diversity of human sexuality in, in terms of different orientations, different genders, different body types. Um, again, when pornography was, you know, during the kind of golden age of pornography in the, in the 70s and 80s, when pornography, the pornography industry was really becoming mainstream, um, most folks in pornography uh, were heterosexual being depicted and were certain kind of body types. That's where the image of the big breasted skinny blonde comes from. Um, but modern pornography instead really recognizes that there are lots of different kinds of people. There are lots of, kind, lots of different kinds of things and people um, that other people find sexy. Ethical porn recognizes that and doesn't try to limit pornography or sexuality into being just one thing. Now that that also is interesting because in the United Kingdom right now and also here in the United in the United States, as people try to restrict access to pornography, um, they are preferentially trying to restrict access to the kinds of pornography they think are unhealthy. Typically, the kinds of pornography they think are unhealthy are pornography where women are in charge or pornography that involves LGBTQ kinds of um, relationships or behaviors. If you're, you know, straight, heterosexual, man on top, penis and vagina kinds of pornography, none of these people think is unhealthy. 
but it's unhealthy if you're watching pornography that is outside that. Well, ethical porn actually accepts that big box of sexuality in very healthy ways. Now, the second way I talk about ethical porn is about the consumption of it. And, and there, what I mean is, first, I like to talk about mindful porn use, and I like to invite people to think about their use of pornography when they're not turned on. Because when we're turned on, our judgment is impaired. Um, we are impulsive. We make decisions we might not make when we're not turned on. So I like to ask people to think about what your porn use means, what you think it reflects about you, about your sexuality. I ask people to think about um, how do you feel about your pornography use? Do you feel any guilt or shame about it? If you do, then there are some attitudes and values about sex or porn that you need to think about. Um, I'm not saying those are right or wrong, but you have a conflict between your behavior and your attitudes. Um, that conflict ends up leading to people suffering. Most of the pain that people experience around pornography, and they do experience pain. I'm, I'm not arguing that. But most of the pain comes from the conflict between their use of pornography and then their attitudes and values around it. What I like to move the conversation towards is what I call sexual integrity, which is helping people to be consciously reconcile their porn use with their values. Now, one way to do that involves looking at why do you feel guilty or ashamed about pornography? Um, and some of those concerns come out of, you know, fears that performers in pornography are potentially being exploited. Um, now, I drink coffee. I drink coffee maybe too much. But one of the things I try and do when I can is drink fair trade coffee because I don't want to, you know, have my Java fix lead to the exploitation uh, or slavery of coffee farmers. And that is one way that I can resolve that kind of guilt or that fear for me. Likewise, when I buy a diamond ring for somebody, I don't want to support the blood trade that exists around diamonds. Now I can buy conflict-free diamonds so that I don't have to feel bad and so that I'm not supporting things I disagree with, but that I can still participate in this buying diamonds or drinking coffee um, in a way that is congruent with my morals and values. So that, we need a fair trade stamp for porn. Yeah, we, I, I kind of think we do. And, and ultimately, <laughs> yeah, ultimately, I think that is what um, ethical porn industry and the ethical porn movement is, is heading towards. Yeah.